Welcome to the Behind the Bench Network. I'm your boy, Jay Shot. Shout out to the bench crew, JB, Jermaine, and Kelvin. Check out their videos of what, how they per perceive what sports is. Let me get straight to the point. There's no superstars in the NBA. There hasn't been real superstars in the NBA for almost 10 years. Now, you got your exceptions. You got your Steph Currys. You got your Kawhi Leonard's. You have your Giannis's, your Jokers. If you want to throw Embiid up in there, that's fine. You can even throw Dame in there. But that's where it ends. And I know a lot of y'all like, well, why you didn't mention LeBron? You're going to see why. Why you didn't mention James Harden? You're going to see why. Why you didn't mention Anthony Davis? You're going to see why. See, I come from an era where you had real superstar players that did the heavy lifting and done more with less. See, what I believe is when you're a superstar type of player, you're going to average anywhere between 24 to 30 points a night. Now, if you're averaging 24 points, then guess what you're doing? You're bringing other, you're helping your team out in other areas. You're averaging 24, but you're also dishing out 12 assists. And you're also, you know, getting five to six rebounds a night. You know, that's mainly your your Jason Kidd's, your Isaiah Thomas's, your Magic Johnson's, your GP's, Gary Payton. They're going to average somewhere between 24, 25, 26, and they're going to dish out at least 10 assists. And they're going to have about five to six rebounds. And they're going to play some great defense. And if they lacking in the defense department, they going they going their leadership is going to put them over the top, like a Magic Johnson. He wasn't great defensively, but it's a, you know that leadership ability is what a lot of these so-called superstars don't have. Now let me let me explain. Oh, you could throw Luca in there too. Right? You could throw Luca in there. But he's on the bubble. And I'm going to tell you why. See, a real superstar is going to give you anywhere, like I said, between 24 and 30 points a night. And if he's giving you somewhere in those high 20s, he's going to give you at least six rebounds and six assists, and he's going to play defense. He's going to be great defense. And if they're not great defensively, they're going to be good. They may not be good individual de defenders, but they might be good team defenders. And if they're not really great as a team defender, then they're a great leader. And like I said, that leadership carries. It makes your team, it makes your team better. You know who to give the ball to. You know uh, how to motivate your players, your teammates. Um, you know where that teammate likes the ball delivered, you know when he wants to score, you know how he likes to score, and you're going to do whatever it takes to make that teammate better. Like, for example, I'm going to use Magic Johnson. I know a lot of y'all heard of Kurt Rambis. Kurt Rambis was never an all-star player. I don't think he ever made an all-star team. He was a starter. Didn't really have a real solid jump shot. He rebound. He played defense. But I'm going to tell you what made Kurt Rambis good. And it was because of Magic's leadership. Magic will have Kurt Rambis on the fast break where all Kurt had to do was catch the ball and lay it up. That's all he had to do. Other than an offensive rebound and going back up 
That's how Kurt Rambis scored on the fast break. Magic leadership, he knew if I could give, if, if Kurt Rambis scores 13, 14 points tonight, our team is going to be hard to beat because we got cap. We got the captain over here. He's going to give us, he's giving us at least 20, 24, 25. Worthy, he's going to give us another 20. I'm going to go ahead and no look my 20 points, 14 assists, two steals, um, 10, 8, 8, 9 rebounds. B. Scott going to lead the team. He going to have another 20 points because I know where to give B. Scott the ball. That's how Magic maneuvered. But he knew if he could give, if he could give Rambus at least 8 to 10 points, it makes him hard to guard. It's too many weapons. Because Magic leadership, he knew. Cap wants that ball on the right block. He going to hit him with, I mean, I'm sorry. He wants that ball on the left block. Where is it? The right block. Yeah, he wants the ball on the right block. He going he gonna, to he gonna sky hook them to death. That's it. Just on the sky hook alone, he going to score. He going to score 14 points on the sky hook alone. I'm going to give him at least another six points. On a fast break, is he trailing? He going to dunk that bad boy in. That's six points right there. He already at 20. He going to go to the line at least eight to ten times. He already at he already at 28, 26 points. James Worthy. I'm going to give him the ball. We're going to hit that fast break. James Worthy going to get at least 10 points on my fast break. He going to go to the line at least seven times. That's 17 points. He going to hit like two jumpers. You see what I'm saying? He already at uh, 21 points. He going to take somebody off the dribble a couple times, get another four points. He already sitting at 24, 25 points. B. Scott going to get 19. He going to hit a couple three. I'm going to have him hit some open threes. He going to hit about two threes a night. I forgot about Cooper. Magic was a, he knew where to get, bottom line, what I'm trying to say, Magic knew where to get his players the ball. And, and same thing with Larry Bird. He he knew. Larry Bird knew how to make his teammates better, his leadership. He knew how to motivate his players. He knew how to get in their face and tell them that they needed to defend because there's a team out there on the West Coast there's, that played this team just two nights ago, and they beat them by we they beat them by twenty five. We need to beat them by twenty five also, because that team on the West Coast, the Lakers, we gonna have to see them in the finals. So whatever they do, we gotta match it, or we gotta do better. See, that's how you mold. That's how it used to be. You go to the old Boston Garden, and they had that that rail. Going on the outside of that damn arena, you knew you was gonna lose. You knew the teams knew when they went into Boston. Boston was not you, you might just count it as an L because Boston will only lose probably about three, maybe four games all year at home. You don't see that in today's game. You don't see that. Michael Jordan, you couldn't go in Chicago and just get a W in, in Chicago. Teams already knew they lost before they when they played Chicago. It was going to be an L. But, you know, and this is going to be a two-part series. And I wanted to give you a little backstory, but I'm going to really get, I'm going to start really breaking down what I mean by what is a superstar? So this is part one. Like, subscribe, follow, check us out. This is the Behind the Bench crew. I'm your boy, Jay Shot.